Hey guys, what's up? It's Shark talking. Welcome back to my channel. We will be discussing some stuff, and especially Silver Emperor's banner, because we will be getting an Ultra Deluxe banner, I believe, on this reset. And we need to discuss this guy, because a lot of people will think that he's overpowered, but, well, no. I don't think this guy is worth so many, but I have to explain why. And as you can see, let's just discuss some other stuff, like we will be getting this new Seeker's Path, and this event is pretty nice because it says that we'll be getting uh, around 1.1 thousand HP cap. So it's probably the second version of the Seeker's Path, and that is good because it's super easy to farm. If you want to also skew up, it will be pretty nice. So we also get the new tower. There are two divine towers with silver team. It. It's for Mirza and then the Silver Emperor. They are not related. They are different characters. Silver Emperor is not a character that came from a not popular game, a mobile game from Saga as well. So he only has one style. I mean, one SS style, and this SS style that you can get from Tower. This is also part of the reason why this guy is not worth. So, let's just open here. As you can see, there's three characters on this Ultra Deluxe banner. The only limited one is Silver Emperor, and he never returned in Japan, so he's kind of a very hair thing. <laughs> so, as you can see, we are now on Nauru Saga website. There is two characters that come from Emperor Saga, and they are Silver Emperor and Selma. This banner is called Emperor Saga banner, or Emperor Saga UDX because of this. Uh, Silver Emperor, I believe, is the father of Selma, and he is, well, a very interesting character, but on the same time, the longevity and utility of his skill is debatable. Uh, as you can see, the SS style has very good arrows for SER, two arrows, five plus here and three points plus on agility all the other status are not so uh easy to farm unless you are using his s style yeah for endurance and will so uh he kind of has a very high str value on 94 percent increase in 14 plus and 77 on agility and 14 plus as well his agility is beyond the standard i mean for attackers at least but we have characters that are faster than him like Asilus and also one of this competition that is meddling his endurance is pretty low for what this guy wants to do and this makes no much sense in my opinion as for skill there is lift upper this was changed for global here in japan it was a b power attack with 21 modifier and 5 vp cost they changed it to d power d 4 bp cost only this is similar to the meteor attack from Mirza, if you have Mirza, but Mirza uses 5 VP. Mirza brings a will debuff alongside as an effect. The lift upper has no effect, it's only an AoE attack with plain damage. Uh, there was a problem with the first skill, in my opinion, on his Japanese style, because the second skill is pretty interesting by itself, and you kind of don't want to ever use the first one. So having a better or different skill here increases the value, but there is a problem with his cycling as well. Before we discuss this, let's discuss the second skill. Sword Chain is a very good attack that it's an intelligence debuff, very nice, but it's also a uh, pierce and slash. So he has two elements for attack. Very nice to have this because he's very powerful for damage. And the power is B, 22 modifier. It's, well, average for 5 VP cost skills. And he has very good volley since he can use it in a lot of different fights. His damage is not that bad, and we kind of need intelligence debuff. But this is only up to the point that you check his intelligence. Look here, 38% intelligence. That's pretty, pretty bad for a status inflictor. Uh, there is some other characters that also have very bad intelligence, like Gustav, Battle of Bucket Hill Gustav, has a double debuff with double flowing slash, and we kind of try to make it work sometimes because of such a high value. You are trying to uh, give two debuffs with Gustav uh, with a higher risk of failing. Here we have a high risk of failing, but only one debuff happens. I was hoping then to just increase this for two hits or I don't know, something, because it doesn't really offer any value right now with Chini on a returning banner. I mean, Onsen Genie is the best intelligence debuffer in the game, and she's still available to Sumo. So, why Sumo for this guy that will need more gems? Well, that's one of the biggest problems with this guy. He will not keep up with the meta for intelligence debuff, and this is his best skill, in my opinion. Okay, uh, the third one is the Impact, and this is the strongest opener with 
10 BP uh, without being a multi hit attack. It's not bad, it's very strong. Uh, I believe it's worth for 10 BP. It will be upgraded in the future. It will reach, uh, I believe, 60 modifier, triple S damage, and it will also reduce the BP cost to 90. But we are very, very far from this. This is like a recent uh, upgrade system in Japan. So, uh, well, he can open with a strong attack, and it's important to understand how strong this can be with him because of his passives. One more thing that I want to add is that, well, this is the least of the intelligence debuffers in the game right now. Like I said, Onsen Genie is the best one, then we have Arcelus, but Arcelus is AoE, and then, then we have Sword Chain. Uh, the future version of Cat will have an attack with 6 BP, so it's kind of very high yet. So he's like uh, right after Arcelus in this list, but he doesn't have high intelligence. But you can see there is another character here besides the Silver Emperor that can use Sword Chain. And he's free and farmable. But not right now, uh, very far in the future. But I want to say something. Look on the intelligence values for this guy. Yes. 57 intelligence. Comparing to Silver Emperor, he's way better debuffer, and he will be free for everyone to get. That's incredible seeing this from a free character that will also be useful for other stuff. <laughs> like, he can use this clean sweep here attack that it's also interesting. Even his third skill has similar power. Yeah, and the guy is free. Distribution. It just will take a lot of time since he was just given out on February of this year in the Japanese version. Uh, in Japan, he has the Silver Wall uh, passive that ignores three attacks for every new wave. So, ignoring three attacks, it's interesting, but is it that important? Well, if you are using him on Zwig, it should be very good, because he can ignore uh, some attacks. You have to use him with the Tiger Shark formation, because it's the one that increases the values for being attacked. So, well, three attacks is still not perfect. Why? Because we have characters like Halloween Vampire Lady and also Madeline. Madeline is the queen of evasion right now. She negates all damage on turn one. And she can be attacked like 10 times. She will keep ignoring. We also have other cards that can do this, like uh, I said, Halloween Vampire Lady. And she also negates all damage on turn 1. If there are 10 enemies and you cannot kill them, she will negate all damage when she's on the front of a Tiger Shark formation. That formation is pretty nice for characters like this. For Robin Cup, it may work because we don't usually have too many enemies. Uh, for Hidden Dojo, I don't think that he works that well. Why? Because in Hidden Dojo, there are many times where you face 9 enemies, so he will only negate three hits, and then after that, he would just receive damage. His endurance is not so high, remember? Why? I don't understand why his endurance is just so bad. Um, so after three hits, there are also some enemies that attack with multiple hits, even on the first turn, so it will remove his shield very, very soon. Uh, his shield is also important to his second passive. He has... Uh, it's a different name, but it's just like Hard Wallop that gives him 20% increase in damage when he's on full HP. So after he gets hit by 3 hits, he would just also lose the effect of the second passive. Losing 2 passives in some turns, it's terrible. It kind of reduces the usability of the character by a lot. So this is why I don't think that is so important to have this character, even though he ignores some attacks, it's only useful, in my opinion, more likely in situations where you could just use Madeline, or just Halloween Vampire Lady. Madeline gives more AoE damage than Silver Emperor in some situations because of coverage. She covers both Slash and Lightning, a very hair uh, elemental type. And if you have Madeline, you have to choose between him and Madeline. And why would you choose him instead of Madeline? Since she works in all contents in this game, save for bosses. Uh, and then we have Fired Up 4. This was increased to Fired Up 5. So he has 20% increase in damage at all times. Uh, all times 20% and sometimes 40% increase in damage when we have Hard Wallop working. So this means that the impact will deal very high damage. But once you are using him for maybe um, some farming, uh, after the first hit, he will not have another skill up. Because 10 BP, and then he doesn't have 4 BP to use 
an AoE attack. In the future, he will be able to do this because of the impact being reduced to 9, and that should be good. And now, you are also thinking, if he kind of competes with Medley, can I use him as a full AoE attacker? You cannot. Why? Because Sword Chain can only be reduced to 5, and if you keep Sword Chain on 5 and Lift Upper on 5 as well, it will always start with Sword Chain. You could try to use another inheritance attack from his S style, but all the S style attacks are kind of bad. C4 cars work, plus once we get his skill to be uh, awakened, this will be good because he ignores attack, but his speed is not so high, uh, but it's still very high for most great sword users. Uh, you can kind of try to use him in some formations where he is the fastest character. Well, he will have to compete with even Bune for Slash. But they kind of work together. If you can uh, use Bune on the third wave or him on the third wave, I don't know. But it's still not perfect combination. And uh, you still have to wait because Carl's Word right now is not strong. It's not good. Uh, the other skills are not good because they depend on his intelligence. That is already very bad. I don't know why. So inheritance is a problem for a long time on this guy. So why invest in a guy that just gets stronger in the future but right now has a lot of competition with a character that most people have with Madeline. Yeah, so, uh, like I said, this guy also got some other buffs for Global and we will be discussing them just one minute. So now we are on Reddit and uh, I just want to thank SNES Days Best Days user for posting this. As you can see, they buffed some of his status but not by much. Uh, he got two more STR and uh, six more dexterity well okay he got even more charisma but he didn't get endurance why or even more will there are some status that he needs his agility is pretty okay as it is but he could have used a different scenario uh, where he could just defend himself better after his buff wears off yeah so, I'm not saying that he's bad, but there are no other future styles of him. So, you get what you have, and he kind of gets better with some skills in the future, but the competition that he has in the Slash department does not justify so many for him. Mirza was released recently, and he is way better than Silver Emperor. This is my opinion. And, well, uh, he does deserve something because he still works for some situations, and I believe that he deserves an 8.5 out of 10 because of how convoluted he is. He doesn't really have a clear design. He could have used a different status distribution, a better BP cycling, but he does not. He's just conflicting with his own design. Okay, so now let's discuss the next one. Now we'll be discussing Butcher. There are some problems with Butcher, <laughs> and those are... This guy has two interesting styles that are not his main. His S and A styles are kind of important to his own build and they are limited. Yeah, every time the Selma comes, she comes with Butcher. And, well, the first and the second styles, the A and S styles were limited alongside Selma. As you can see, 9 points on STR with 2 arrows, that's the cap, that's the max that you can get beyond your normal base. And in the other style has agility, and we need both agility and STR to use his SS style. So you are kind of lacking the perfect build. He can still use it without his S and A style, but <laughs> this is a, a shame. Okay, so we'll be discussing uh, other stuff like he has 87 for STR. I think that it could be higher since X builders usually have higher STR to well have lower dexterity, but this is what he has. 70% in endurance could have been higher as well, since he's more likely to be used on the front. Dexterity is on 63, I don't think this is a high value. Uh, agility is on 65, I don't think that you need so much agility with him, it's okay. And then he has uh, 59 on will, 53 on love, I don't know why he has so much love, and 38 on charm. So, for our skills, the first one is Fear Slash, and this is pretty good, actually. Especially if you use it in a different character. <laughs> but we have to use this with Butcher. And this will decrease or debuff the SCR of your target. The debuff value is between 10 to 15% on max. And it will also buff his own STR. So it's a double effect thing. It buffs himself and it buffs the targets. 25 buff for SCR is not bad. It's actually good. It's kind of off the lowest value that we can get. But as because it has a cheap PP cost, you can just keep spamming this till he debuffs the target and also keeps buffing himself. It's also worth noticing that 
The two most used STR debuff skills so far were Bone Crusher and Submission. And those two skills uses 6 PP. This guy can use it with 4 so that he can spam this way more. But what is the problem with him? His intelligence. Look, it's even worse than Silver Emperor. 31%. You can kind of fix both characters if you are using a Wall's Daughter, but even then, I don't know if she will be uh, good enough for the future. And in the future, you can also use the Matriarch, and she can buff the intelligence to make these characters work. But maybe not even on the first turn, you have to save VP2, she can apply two buffs so that they can reach very good intelligence to use this. So, well, uh, the second skill is Mega Hawk, this is a very old skill since the launch of the game it's an aoe attack with c power 19 modified it's not bad actually but it's very costly it's 11 or 9 once fully awakened the last one is the pirates this is an aoe attack that uses both slash and cold damage this is not bad actually uh sadly it doesn't have the fast property and he's not that fast remember and there is a power 28 modifier. This is pretty standard for skills that uses 13 BP. That can be used only on the second turn. Uh, also, there is a problem. If you use this, you won't have enough BP to use any other skill in a three turn cycle. Yes, this is what he has. Now we will discuss his passes. The first one is absorption attack. 25% chance of healing when attacking. Strength feeling 3 means that he will increase his STR on the start of the round. This is just like what we have with the Ward Claudia and some other characters. It only triggers once, so he gets more damage already. Very nice, but it's interesting to say that it's made for farming and not for boss fights, because only once. And the last one is for the 4. It means that he will get 15% uh, increase on all time. So let's give a look on this. Why does he have an effect that only triggers once, if he's made for boss fights? Yes, he's made for boss fights, you cannot say otherwise, because we don't debuff enemies when we are farming story or just other stages. But then he just has this healing effect that is for boss fights. The second one is, well, something that he starts with, but then he loses. If he had another increased damage passive, it would be better, any type of other passive. It's not bad, but it's not made for boss fights. Well, and as for inheritance, we have Tomahawk Plus in the future, when it can be upgraded. Uh, 2 BP for C power is not bad, but, well, he's more like a debuffer than anything else. And then there is this attack drop that also debuffs STR. You won't need this. Why? Because he already has a better version. And Blade Row. It's an attack that, well, makes no sense as well, since it needs to be upgraded and it has similar power as the Pirates. With the difference of only 1 BP less. And that's it! Well, uh, he can also debuff agility, but with a 6 VP attack, that makes it, well, not good. So, what you can see is that he does not need the other styles for inheritance. He's self-sustainable. But on the same time, he needs that because of how he could be better with status gains. Yes, with status gains, he could get more STR with an A style, he could get more agility with his S style. You are locked here with your options. And uh, because of such a bad intelligence to try to debuff, and also a uh, passive that doesn't really work for boss fights, well, as for farming setups, uh, the second passive kind of works, because it's 20% increase in STR, and then you can just lock him to just use the first skill, Fear Slash. Just leave the second and the third skill on 11 and 16, you will just keep using Fear Slash all the time. Uh, the only problem is that he, if he does not attack on the first turn, this guy will be missing some attacks and also failing to debuff, and this is like his central role. So in my opinion, he's not that good, he could have been better, he does have an incredible skill, but it's not easy to use. If you get him to level 50, you still be missing here and there, and even with extra help, it's not easy to use this guy. Offer some value for boss fights because he can heal, I just wanted a better second passive, but this allows him to start strong enough to deal some damage even when he's failing to debuff. But if you can manage to get him to debuff your enemy while also getting stronger every new turn, you have a very useful unit. The thing is just that you have to understand the weaknesses of this character to know when you get to play with him. In my opinion, he deserves an 8.0 out of 10. There are some uses for Butcher, but you have to understand how to use him. And now let's discuss Selma. Selma here is not that good, I'll be explaining why. She comes 
after her summer style that was pretty good, she had some problems when she was launched because of formations that were based on dexterity, but now there's plenty of formations that she can be used. Uh, she has a good agility as well, uh, good dexterity. But this version of Selma has lower damage potential, way lower when compared to Summer Selma. She tries to specialize in AoE and uh, status element effects. As you can see, there's also another problem. She does not have any arrow for dexterity, so you kind of have to switch to her S style to get dexterity faster. Uh, she has uh, at least five points extra on agility and two arrows for agility and one arrow for intelligence. Why? I'll be explaining later. Uh, there's also some comparison here. Uh, as you can see, only 81% to dexterity. That's even lower than her first limited style. But she trumps on agility. That's a very high agility here. Because she can perform as an insta-killer. While not as good as a ward cloud, she can still do the job depending on the will of your enemies. Uh, or you can also bring the mayor to make her work. As you can see, she has a little more endurance. And, uh, well, the other status are not so relevant to the build. But Summer Selma has more damage also from passive. Uh, we don't be discussing this version of Selma because it's not relevant anymore. As Selma is just for inheritance. <laughs> I don't know what to say too much about her skills. The first one is not good. A longer is an attack that can be used three times in a row, but only depending on your cycle. She would not be able to use this three times in a row because of Stingray uh, having a priority here. Stingray is a better skill altogether. Why? A longer has only 21 modifier. It's okay for a 5 EP skill. There, there is no other element or effect here. So Stingray can be reduced to 6, as you see, 6 against 5. Stingray is an AoE attack with a good multiplier, it's D14. This is just like Mirage Blade, and Mirage Blade uses 10 or 8 PP. It's also indirect, so it will not be countered. It's a very good AoE attack that we saw before in Global Exclusive Monica. And she's a better user of Stingray. She can buff the Pierce damage from the squad, and she also has intelligence. It's very comparable between the two characters. Okay, so Stingray is also a problem because you can only use this three times in a row. The, the cost is six. And even worse, if you use two Stingrays, you won't even have enough BP to use a longer. You have to uh, inherit something that has low BP cost just to have a third skill on the third turn. Or you can just finish one of the ways with your other characters so that she will only need to use Stingray. Uh, the last skill is Samsung. I don't know the name here on Global. It's not bad. It's an indirect attack as well. With double S power with 15 modifier. It's higher than some other skills that also have double S power, but not much. So 10 BP is a little too much, but uh, still okay to use in my opinion. It's comparable to V Impact, but V Impact has like 55 modifier and uses 10 BP. Here we have the indirect effect instead of just direct and a little less power. Okay, and for passives, we have Ability Weakened Tree. She will debuff the endurance of a target when she attacks. The fact, 15%, that's not high. Uh, the chance, 25% chances. This is not as good as any other debuff like STR, uh, Agility, Intelligence, and Will. They are way better. The buffing endurance makes no much sense unless you are using low heritage characters because you usually have enough status being, uh, you know, STR or Dexterity or uh, even Agility, depending on the character that you are using. If you are using physical damage, you will face the endurance of your target. But usually the enemies have low endurance already because if they had a very high endurance, we will not be dealing high damage. So this effect is very niche and will only work if a boss has a very stupid high endurance. And well, it's still a chance to debuff. Then we have Ability Absorption 4 for Endurance. It's a 20% debuff that will happen on the beginning of a round. Round is the same as a wave. So it only triggers once on the start of a fight. What does this make for farming? Well, depending on the stage, if you only have only one enemy on the wave, it could be useful to increase our damage if you don't have anything else. But I prefer to open a wave with the Sif from School's Banner because she buffs 25% of STR from the 
hold squad. She has a very high agility. She can go first, buff the squad, and then the squad will do more damage. This could be useful only if you are using maybe um, dex-based characters that don't get buffed by SDR. Because Sif is way better if you want to do something like buff. So uh, it's still not that useful, in my opinion. And even only useful in waves that have only one enemy. And then the last one is Fire Deep 4, 15% increase on damage at all times. Uh, just for comparison, the other version of Selma, Summer Selma, has 30% uh, increase in damage if she's on full HP. If she's not on full HP anymore, she will just get uh, 15. She also reduces damage when she's on full HP, so she can survive some stages where you are farming and the enemies have high speed. Uh, in a boss fight, I don't think this is useful, especially because you tend to not have full HP all times. But at least for farming, she gets the upper hand, she will have 30% increase. Not only that, but she has a higher dexterity that will make her do way more damage. But returning to this version of um, Selma, let's discuss something. Look on the intelligence, 59. Let's check Summer Selma. It's 58. <laughs> the difference is just the bonus points. We have some bonus points here, and they are 13. This makes her a little better for insta-kill attacks. Just a little more. It may be the value that you need to insta-kill a target or not. Because Summer Selma has an insta-kill attack, and this insta-kill attack is called uh, 100 flowers in Japan. It's a small chance to insta-kill, so she will be failing. Uh, a Ward Cloud has 84 and she fails sometimes, and it's not reliable. But you could just inherit this to make this version of Selma a little better. Yes. But this version of Selma can get Stingray into Summer Selma, if you have her. Because then she would just have an AoE option. Because all of her attacks are single targets. <laughs> As you can see, the new version of Selma is more like a complement to Summer Selma and only for those that have her. If you are using this version of Selma just for herself without any inheritance option, you will not be getting the whole thing. You will be missing. Just using Samsung will not be that strong. I strongly recommend using Diana that was released recently uh, as a new Platinum style. Then this version of Selma. Diana has a better damage even though she's a turn 2 damage dealer. She has better potential than Selma. This was the last style of Selma to be released in Japan. I do believe that they will release more because she's a very popular character. And well, uh, let's discuss inheritance. And it's easy to discuss inheritance because there are not many. <laughs> what you can do here, let's just change the zoom options and I will explain it better. Uh, there's not many options. Because she has a little more intelligence, you could tr try to use Faint. And Faint has a chance to stun, medium chance to stun. And that allows her to have a skill ready for the last uh, turn, if you are using a 3 turn cycle. So you have open with Stingray, then Stingray again, and then finishes with Faint, because you cannot finish with a longer. As you can see, the other skills are not important. Not important. And then if you want to use damage, you should be using Summer Selma instead. Okay, so uh, this brings a problem to this version of Selma because it relies on having another version of her that is not available. It's a limited version. And uh, she by herself doesn't offer anything that good. The endurance debuff is niche, and not many people will find a usage for this. So, in my opinion, she deserves a 7.5 out of 10 as well, because her potential is broken. Even Global Exclusive Monica had some problems with her build, but those problems were not that high as this version of Selma. Sadly, she is an easy pass, and for those that like the character, they can still summon. And, well, I think they can find a use, but sadly, I don't think that she has a large uh, chance to become something useful for the long run, okay? So in the end, the final question always comes, is it worth summoning for this banner? In my opinion, no. This is the first total no, in my opinion. Silver Emperor is not bad per se. He has very good STR, he can deal very good damage as opener, and also uh, when he gets to do AoE attacks, but his cycling does not allow him to use three times in a row. Uh, his passive is unique, could be useful here and there, but he fails to be a 
good tank or a good attacker, depending on the cyclings or also his choice for uh, being a debuffer attacker without a high intelligence. It's You always feel like you're missing something with him. And the other Platinum styles are not that good, you can wait to get them, there's nothing special about them, so this banner becomes a very low value. If you want an intelligence debuffer, please go to, to the returning banner that has a Water Cloud and a Genie and summon for a Genie instead. She is way better than Silver Emperor and will keep being relevant for time and time to come. This is it guys, thank you so much for watching this video, please subscribe if you haven't. If you want to support the channel, there's links here in the description of the video, you can also join our Discord server with a link here as well. We'll see each other on the next one. Bye.